Hi everybody, it's Az here from Heel vs. Babyface. Garrisons. Love them, loathe them, or you're just complete and utterly indifferent to them. I think it's safe to say that they haven't lived up to the hype at all of what we hoped they would turn out to achieve. But, in this video, I'm going to give you my top 5, in no particular order, major improvements that should have been made to Garrisons that would have tipped them over the edge and made them a far more enjoyable experience for everyone. Now these of course are my opinions and you may agree or disagree and that's entirely up to yourself and feel free to post in the comments down below what you think. My fifth improvement would have been to make Garrisons account bound. Did you know that even during the beta testing process for Warlords of Draenor, Blizzard was still undecided on whether or not to make Garrisons account or character bound? They opted for the latter when it absolutely should have been the former. There are a number of reasons for this one, but one of the major factors being burnout. When WAD was exposed as seriously light on content, people looked at alternative ways to keep themselves occupied. Hell, even patch 6.1 came with the new and improved heirloom tab, which allowed the quicker leveling of characters all the way up to level 100. Even Blizzard were desperate to distract you from the fact that there was very little to do end game. But when you had alt characters in Draenor, nothing became more monotonous and soul destroying than having to grind garrison resources and constructing a whole new garrison from scratch. And the more characters you had, the worse that became. Trying to maintain all of these was nigh on impossible without being brain dead. It would inevitably lead to burnout and the desire to not even bother maintaining any of your garrisons at all. Tag on to that the really limited choices for large and medium buildings with only five variations of each, everything felt very samey very quickly. Making garrisons account bound would have really have forced you to think hard about the buildings that you wanted to add, especially profession ones, as the current character model structure allows you to access all of the buildings pretty much destroying not only professions, but also the economy which surrounds them. Mines and the herb garden should have also have been added to these choices, freeing up more slots for either one medium building or two smaller plots. And also, what cooler thing would there have been than to actually see your alts in the garrison? Yes, whenever you were in your garrison, all alts that had passed through the Tanan jungle introduction, obviously dependent on faction of course, would appear as NPC type characters walking around as we currently see with the followers, randomly interacting with other NPCs and followers alike. You could inspect them, should you wish to look to see if you can create any gear for them, etc, etc. This would have been an awesome way to add some sort of synergy to your alts, and also to give the feeling that all of your characters were involved in the garrison process. My fourth improvement would have been location, location, location. Now, I'm not going to derail this video into a what Blizzard announced at BlizzCon and never delivered on, but this is one of those occasions. As well as the original Ashran, Capital Cities, Tanan Jungle as a leveling zone, Farallon, PvP tournament. Okay, 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 sorry, I couldn't resist that. But when garrisons were announced at BlizzCon, they stated that you could choose the zone that you wanted your garrison to be in, which made a lot of sense. It wouldn't have mattered if it was in a much higher leveling zone than, say, a fresh off the Tanan Jungle boat level 90 character, because we've already seen how Peak of Serenity had worked in Mists of Pandaria. And this would have also have added some much needed diversity when it came to garrison aesthetic. Have you seen Draenor? If there is one thing we absolutely cannot dispute in WAD is how utterly amazing these environments and character models are. Those teams have completely outdone themselves, giving us some of the most breathtaking visuals this game has ever known. Each zone having its own rich layers of diversity too, so why do we need any more reasons than that? 
Well, the answer is we don't. Blizzard could have phased a selection of areas in each zone instead of bottlenecking people to the choice of just one and allowed us to pop our garrisons, within reason of course, pretty much where we wanted them. Just think right now, if you could pick up your garrison and plop it down in any zone, which would it be? The rolling fields of Nagrand, the mystical forests of Talador, the harsh wastelands of Gorgorond. There are so many amazing places that it'd really allow you to think. And if you reconsidered, well, there's no reason why Blizzard couldn't enforce a hefty gold moving bill for you to relocate to another place. Visiting friends' garrisons when they look identical to yours doesn't really fill me with the desire to do so, and certainly not to pick up a daily quest either. But if we resided in different places, at the very least, we would get to travel around Draenor instead of the whole population phased out in one zone away from the rest of the world. Which brings us very neatly onto my third improvement, Garrison Layout and Themes. World of Warcraft has been with us for approximately 10 years, Warcraft as a whole for just over 20 years. You would have thought in that time Blizzard would understand why people play certain races. They gravitate towards them for whatever reason it may be, aesthetic law, environment, and if people love their race so much, don't you also think that they would have wanted to have had the ability to set their garrison up as per that race's look? Just imagine a pure Sendorai themed garrison, and I am not in the least bit sorry to anyone that just came in their panties when I said that. Alliance, I'll even throw you a boner as well. What about a pure Worgen based garrison with its Victorian England go blarmy Mary Poppins visuals? They would have looked absolutely awesome. I'll even raise you here as well. Why don't we have the ability to choose the faction style we want regardless of the race that we're playing? I'm human, but I love the Night Elf theme. Boom, that's how my garrison looks. I'm a troll, but I love the goblin mentalness of architecture. Kablamo, that's the style in which my buildings could be created in. And why couldn't we determine where we want the buildings and environmentals as well? This could have been something fun for us to do with our level 3 garrison fresh from hitting 100. Don't want the pond and bridge where they are right now? Fine, replace it with another environmental detail of Blizzard's choosing. A vineyard, a grove, etc, etc. Allowing us more choices to seriously diversify how we make our garrisons look and feel potentially unique. <gasps> oh my lordy, did I just swear then. But... It's really easy to see why we can't do this, because the art department appear to be the only ones doing any bloody work. They've been utterly swamped this X-Pack, and this would have only have added to their huge workloads. But, that said, to me, it really was a detail that should have been implemented from the get-go when garrisons were conceived in the barren womb of the development team. The second improvement takes us away from garrison aesthetics and focuses on a piece of content that should have been a lot more important than it ended up being. Ever heard that before? Yeah, me too. Garrison invasions. Now, at first glance, if one can glance on the YouTube video, I will forgive you for saying, nah. And that is really because they could have been so much better. The nah is really only the impression that you were left with. What you got was like a teenage boy's first sexual encounter. Great fun for about 20 seconds, and then it was all over. So why was that? Well, Warlords of Draenor has six forms of garrison invasion. The Batani, the Gorin, the Iron Pussies, the Ogres, the Shadow Council, and the Shadow Moon Clan. Problem was, all the invasions were the same. It didn't matter who came at you, brah. They all followed the same copy and paste formula. Fight off ads, mini boss. Stay alive fighting ads, 
Big Boss. The methods for defeating these six different factions were identical, and invasions were a big deal. This was your chance to flex your commander muscles to battle the scum out of your garrison. Each of the attacking factions should have had their own unique style. The Goran should tunnel their way into your garrison and it becomes a very much a boots on ground internal fight. The Iron Pussies would try and smash their way using siege vehicles so you'd get onto your battlements, man the cannons, start shooting at them and then starting to pour hot oil over the troops that were using the battering rams to try and get through your front gate. The Batani you fought using flamethrowers, they're plant based organisms, you get the drift by now. Each invasion should have been different allowing you to perform varied methods of repelling the attacks. And patch 6.2 should be bringing with it the legions invasion on your garrison too, which it probably won't. And if these invading forces did any damage to the garrison, then show it. Repair buildings using the garrison resources, put them to some use, because the reward bag should have been sexy enough for you to make those risks. But you stick a pig in a dress one week and a pig in a hat the next week, it's still the same pig. Lazy development gets found out very quickly indeed, and therefore makes for dull and not worthy to be played content, which is how I think a lot of people feel about garrison resources now. And finally, the first major improvement I would have made is, and you should have guessed this by now, allow us to fight with our followers. There's now a running joke going around the forums and Reddit and Twitter that our garrison followers are actually getting to do more content than us. For Pete's sake, in patch 6.2, they're getting to go to Farallon, an island Blizzard showed off at BlizzCon 2013 and then subsequently removed from the map, so they didn't have to feel pressured to put it in the game. So whereas we get the good old middle finger, our followers go out to play. This has been the gripe of a lot of people about garrisons. The command table is nothing more than a Facebook game. Drag, click and then sit back on our asses for hours waiting for them to return. Yes, we're the commander, but sweet lordy, give us something to do. Let us lead from the front. So here's what I propose. Blizzard also have a major issue with another piece of content in the game dungeons. They mean nothing in WoW anymore thanks to LFR and they don't serve the purpose that they used to because it's easier for Blizz to rehash existing content without having to think of anything creative. So I give to you follower dungeons. As commander you select an additional four followers to come with you to form a party. They've already got their designations in the game Demonology, Warlock, Resto, Shami, etc, etc. And once a day, you can go into each of the released dungeons, each boss having the chance to drop a special item, be it transmog gear, or a blueprint for your garrison, or a follower contract. And the final boss has a small percent chance to drop a new mount, or maybe even, how about a game time token blitz? Fancy giving some of them away for free? Apex's Crystal Dailies? Ugh. If we're lumbered with this moronic crap, then at least we should be able to select two followers to come with us. Follower storylines could also open up a la garrison missions, allowing you to bond more with certain followers, going out on specific missions with them, discovering new and interesting treasures, or even some tragic heartbreaking storylines. Gear them up with your own unique uniforms that have been designed at your garrison thanks to an NPC that you saved on a garrison follower storyline mission, promoting your favourites so they have a separate look from the others. Look, there's so much scope and potential here, it's mind-boggling that garrisons are what they currently are. I'm sure you yourselves have had plenty of ideas, so why don't you share a few in the comments down below. And I hope you enjoyed the vid, if you did, do give it a thumbs up and also subscribe to my channel. Follow me on social media and Twitch for live streaming and I'll be back with some more stuff very soon. You take care everybody, bye bye.